bahu bona matlo never see them go my bit leg no my fella di jomba tswana barata o kenya meno na di lo don't worry to say ba get saka bo mundo di tlo ke mano saka bahu bona matlo never see them go my showcase some zans africa we are here at Bakang Farm, run by Motlapele Morole. You guys know him as Momolimi. He used to be a rapper back in the day, and he took a 180 turn back to working his father's land. My name is Siabo Wegazi. You guys know me as Scoop Makatini. We are here to basically talk about land reform, uh, working of the land, and profitability of the land. You guys got a lot to learn from this. This is views from the bottom up. Give a red, it's a bottle, they have something to say. Conspiracy all over Mulimi, the Pempara. Homo Betsa, young one, no one's in a damn car. Cashela, Bohipi, Hamuti, Leshon Kada. Gamiti, Bos, Asalea, Bufa. So, I mean, Mo, with, with, with what's happening right now? Uh, politically, yeah. you've got you've got certain people. Yeah, uh, even the public yeah. feels like they should be given the land back. Yeah. Can you just talk about the strategy that yeah. we are employing right now, or we are forced to believe uh, in this strategy of yo, let's get the land back? Can yeah. you talk about the, the the pros and cons of the land? Yes, uh, getting that land and working that land. Well, the issue of land, uh, we don't have to go far to actually have um, a reference because just north of us here in Zimbabwe, we've had a an issue of, of land, mm. where land has been redistributed to um, indigenous people, and uh, the whole exercise has failed. But there are many arguments to that. You know, um, some of us believe it's because of the sanctions that it has failed, not it is not because Zimbabweans can't farm. Mm. Come to South Africa, I think, because I know there is a lot of land that's already in black hands mm. uh, in the former homelands and yeah and under chieftaincies that is so underutilized mm. that i do not think taking more land is advisable at this stage oh. if we have not mastered to work the land that is in our hands right now then there's no point taking new lands in my experience i've seen a lot of farms that have been redistributed or been given back to communities or individual cooperatives or farmers that has collapsed not because people could not work but because the system is not put together properly in terms of the support system the education that needs to go into it the money that makes a, a farm works and everything that goes with that exercise farming is a generational business you only get it right with time you cannot get on a farm and make it work in a year let alone 10. There's a quote, I forget now, but it's by Ian Smith, the former Prime Minister of Rhodesia, mm. that goes to something like, you don't inherit land from uh, your ancestors, but you actually borrow it from your grandchildren. Mm. That means every, you are working it now in preparation for them to work it better. So I think, yes, land distribution is important, mm. but how it's done will be the big part of it and the timing of it. At this point in 2017, not yet. When uh, the duality of you coming from Johannesburg, yes. um, rapping yes. and leaving that life and leaving that state of mind yes. and coming to uh, a more farmer's yes. state of mind, yes. how, how, how did you maneuver that? Like, yes. How did you navigate that for yourself? Because yes. we know uh, how much of the city can take over us. And yes. I would like for your personal journey, for people to know, yes. um, what were the sort of things that came to you that, that gave you the revelation of, yo, I need to go back and yes. be a man of the land? Like, what happened? Yes. First of all, when I, I got into the rap game, I already had the, what you call, the AKA Muli, which is farmer. Mm. You know, and farmer was just not my name, was my job. That's yeah. why it's Mo Muli, Mi Mutla Pili, Sure, know. That's, and, that means farmer. Yes. No doubt. You see, <laughs> so, at the point, the brand would not make sense if I was farmer and staying in the city. No doubt. <laughs> you know? yeah. But uh, also, I did one album staying in Joburg, my, yeah. my debut album. Um, and uh, immediately after that, after the Summer Awards of 2008, mm. I packed up my bags and left. Uh, in that June, I had a visit from Kabom, uh, who was staying in, I think, Haniju. Yeah. And Kabom says like, hey buddy, what's happening? I'm like, no, I'm packing, I'm leaving now. So where are you going? I'm like, I oh, know I'm going back home, I'm going back to farm. Mm. So what? I'm like, no, I've achieved my goal here. So, yes. and it's like, dude, who comes to Joburg and achieves this goal? And, and <laughs> Joburg is the goal. Sure. You know, but the reality is, 
all the time I was in the city, I felt like a tractor. I think the point I'm trying to make is, this is something that you, you have to be born into it. How did you guys uh, occupy this farm? Is it, is it yeah. a land distribution thing or it's been in the family for years? Uh, those old people that I've been telling you about yes. now were farmers working for white farmers. Yes. So my grandfather, my dad's dad, happened to work for this farmer, uh, Yap Velkins, mm -hmm. who was an MP during the National Party era. Yes. So he was always in Cape Town and then my grandfather would be working the farm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you know the concept of share, share cropping. Where, oh, no. <laughs> where <Hit me>. this <laughs> a long time ago, this how it used to work, you know. Why, uh, when firstly the white people moved inland, they would share crop with the blacks. That means they work the land together, yes, and then then they share the crop. So you know, after 1912, of course, all the land was transferred to the white people. Mm. But then there were still farmers like Jap Wilkins who were doing share cropping, which was illegal, by the way. But then Pete and them they could work the farm yeah. and then share the crop with bus when he comes back from Cape Town. So after 1940s or 50s, when the National Party came into power and apartheid was now legislative, now they started kicking them out of the farm. Obas was, I think he died or something, and his children were taking over and they were more racist. So they were kicking them out and they were in the uh, Fentersdorp area. And you know, so all the black people were pushed to the reserves, which is this side. So they started moving more this way north, basically. and. Uh, uh, my uncle and my granddad, they moved over to Botswana, they were farming in Lubate, and my dad was farming the Barolong area because it was not under, it was still under the Cape Colony. Yes. It was not under Transvaal. Okay. Uh, so, <coughs> they were still farming those lands, and, and so we started um, farming for other people and so on. And then how we eventually ended up here is that uh, um, my father managed to lease the land from the Botswana government, mm. which was a homeland. You know, uh, these were you. former, um, they were occupied by white farmers before, you know. So all those farmers had to move out. Oh, Their land okay. was, what you call, nationalized sure. or, or, or what is it, expropriated, sure. but with compensation. Okay. So they were compensated, you know, and then, then it was given to black farmers. So all this area here is about 10,000 hectares. It's just uh, farms divided like 400, 500 hectares uh, between black farmers. I see cattle. Yes. Uh, what are we walking in between now? Here's a sunflower patch. Uh, it's still small. It's 60 hectares. It's my first year again doing sunflower. Mm. And uh, I just wanted to do a trial. So this is what we have done. But this is a trial? Yeah, this is a trial. Damn. All right. Um, OK. We have sandy soil. Mm -hmm. This is sandy soil. Um, sandy loam soil. It's between sand and, uh, and loam soil. OK. Yeah, it's good. but. It drains easily. That yeah. means even if it drains, uh, it will dry quickly, but it's good for plants. So what you want to do is if you're into crop, before you plant, you need to dig deep until you find the topsoil to know how deep the soil is. Because sure. at some point, the soil texture will change. And and how, do you, how do you know it's topsoil? Is it the wetter one? No, no, no. You just have to dig a hole. Okay. Okay, yeah. Cool. You need to just dig a hole and just keep digging deep. You will see the profile of the soil will change as oh, you go okay. deeper sure. in. And then they will tell you the depth of the soil. Mm -hmm. That's how deep the roots will go before it stops. Okay. And, and, and then you need to take it to lab for them to check the, 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 the nutrition of the acidity. Yeah. Uh, if it's acidic or alkaline. Sure. Because if it's acidic, it will affect the plant. Yeah. If it's alkaline, it will affect the land. So it needs to be neutral. Yeah. So then uh, the test results will tell you whether you should put a bit of lime, whether you should put a bit of phosphate yeah. to balance out the quality of the soil before and you plant. Is this growing well? It looks like yes. it's growing pretty well. This awesome. is a Panar 7033 uh, cultivar. Sure. Uh, so before we plant it, they will do like 10 trials on it. So by the time we plant it, we don't want to know if it's doing well. Yeah. We have to just take it that, yes, it is doing well. Sure. If the conditions are good, it will be good. Sure. What we're just looking at is that if the plant is healthy, it's green. Mm -hmm. if, if the color changes and it becomes a bit yellow, then it lacks nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Then you need to do some that. That's your problem. You need to put a bit of land on it so that the, um, you help it grow. The, the green helps with the, for it to, and to, to take in the sun yeah. uh, for, for chlorophyll and then it grows quicker. Okay. And then you just have to look for damage if it has any like bugs or worms that are damaging that, the crop. The damage, the holes here, is that, is no, that no, will there be worms or that's natural? Yeah, no, this is not, this is okay. So okay. the plant is healthy and um, it just needs rain. And okay. then, yeah, and then it will do well. All right then, brother. Let's go check out the other spots. Yeah, yeah. Nice one. Yeah, we go. Uh, we're looking at uh, what we call Bakan, uh, Bakan Lake. 
It's actually a piece of lake that is standing here, right here. Uh, when you go to the middle there, you'll find standing water, so I will not try go there. And uh, fish also stay in the middle of the grass. Uh, so basically, as it stands, it's of no value to me right now. Uh, it's just grazing land, but with capital and money, we can actually turn this actual place into a, a real standing dam with valves and, and pump water into it and develop campsites for and, and turn it into a country lodge. And also if we have money to put up fencing and then we can start getting game and, uh, and wild animals and then it's a, it's, a game, it's, it's a game park. So half the farm will be for normal farming, half the farm will be for game, game farming and, uh, and, a, and a resort, maybe a conference center as well, which is profitable and can actually uh, make, make, uh, help make a living on a farm. So it's all a matter of serious capital and, and an investment for one to realize such a dream.